So I'm Dr. Joseph Goldberg. I'm a clinical professor of psychiatry at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. We do research in psychopharmacology and mood disorders. And when we think of treatment-resistant mood disorders, both unipolar and bipolar, a lot of the standard kinds of treatments that we've looked at haven't really borne out as being as successful as we would hope, particularly if one or two initial treatments hasn't been hasn't been helpful. So uh, this has really moved the field more toward novel kinds of treatments. And one of the novel approaches that we're beginning to think about is uh, manipulating the glutamate system. So glutamate is an excitatory amino acid in the brain, and intracellular glutamate seems to play a very important role in regulation of mood, thinking, perception. Drugs that antagonize a particular type of glutamate receptor called the NMDA receptor have been shown to be especially promising in the treatment of severe depression. So many of us are increasingly familiar with the drug ketamine, an anesthetic that's been around for an awfully long time that's been shown in recent years to have value when administered intravenously at a particular dosing schedule to deliver a very rapid and robust response to depression, often within an hour or two of its infusion. And about a third of patients who receive an intravenous ketamine infusion hold on to their response about a week into it. So um, this, in many ways, is one of the most promising new avenues in treating depression, hard to treat depression. It's still quite not ready for prime time, though. Um, so ketamine is a very variable drug. It can potentially have an antidepressant effect. It could also have a psychotomimetic effect. It can have an anesthetic effect. It needs to be carefully monitored. It's not really set up for outpatient practice, at least in the mainstream as of yet. But uh, studies are looking at its potential value and its role as a preventative as well. Questions arise about um, uh, how does one sustain a response to a, a response to ketamine? Uh, much like ECT can have an acute effect, preventing recurrences and relapses still remains an issue. So there's a lot of research looking at um, multiple dose administrations or possible other medicines that could sustain a response. Lastly, on this issue of the glutamate system, much of the interest uh, arising from ketamine is looking at other medicines that can antagonize the glutamate receptor and might have value either on their own merit for treating depression or for preventing recurrences after a response to ketamine. So for example, a uh, drug such as Riliazole, a medicine that's used in demyelinating disorders, uh, minocycline, an antibiotic that actually has some anti-glutamate properties, and a number of other candidate compounds that either directly affect the NMDA receptor or uh, allosteric uh, modulatory sites like the glycine receptor uh, is a very active area of research right now. So we, we're very hopeful that in, in the not too distant future, we'll actually have a whole new uh, realm of targets in treating depression.